Hey everybody, welcome to Anarchy, the podcast about anime with two brothers. I'm Ben. And I know when to hold them, know when to fold them, and know when the dealing is done. Well, that's good. You know, he passed away recently. Oh, did he? Oh, that's sad. It was very sad, but it meant was it that... Cor- like, was it the corona? I don't think so. I think it was right before the corona. Happens to the best of us. Well, it's going to happen to all of us. He died on March 20th of not coronavirus. Although it does say natural causes, but... Uh, I don't know who knows that. Corona natural. is natural causes. Cor- corona is natural. So <laughs> it's all natural. Uh, actually, it's not because it was made in a lab. So by they, Kim Trails. By Kim Jong-un, who is also yeah. dead and replaced Probably. by an anime girl, apparently. By a skin stealer. A skin stealer? Yeah, skin stealer. Have you not heard about skin stealers? Do tell. They steal skin. Do they? Yeah. Uh, do they wear the skin? They do. They do. Well, see, that's creepy and I don't like it. Have you seen the anime Kim Jong-un stuff? No, but I would happily do it. Hmm. Yeah. That's a thing that's happening. All right, sure. Why not? Mm-hmm. It's all because uh, someone captured a photo of her at some point running across the street with a slice of bread in her mouth or photoshopped in a slice of bread in her mouth. doesn't really matter. Fair enough. It doesn't. <laughs> so now we have my sister couldn't possibly be a dictator. So what have you been up to during this quarantine time that is never ending? Uh, well, it's never ending. It's now past Star Wars Day for us, so that's nice. So that's nice. What have I been doing? I've been replaying Final Fantasy VII, the real one. Oh, the real one? Yeah. Are you enjoying it more that you've played the remake? Yeah, I guess. That's an odd question. Am I enjoying it more because I've played the remake? Yes. I have not heard good things about the remake except from you. And oh, a couple uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know what there is to complain about. Mostly the voice acting. Oh, I play on Japanese. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's enough. a stupid complaint. <laughs> The American voice acting is bad. Yeah, play it on the Japanese voice track. Are you a moron? Yeah, some people are. <laughs> Why would you do that? Because they're sad. They're sad, sad people. I'm playing the game at a suboptimal experience. Why is it so suboptimal? Uh, because you picked the button that said, I would like it to suck, please. <laughs> it's a setting. You can change it. <laughs> you can change the setting of suckage of the voice acting. Because the Japanese voice acting is really good. So, like... But my question was aimed at having played the remake. Does that heighten your enjoyment of the original? I mean, kind of. It's weird. It really highlights how fast the original is, which is weird thinking about it uh, when I originally played it versus now, uh, how quickly the plot moves. Well, I mean, in the original, like running through Midgard, there's there's one section where there's like this robot hand and yep. you just you run over it and it's gone. Yeah. But in the, in remake, the remake, it's like a big thing. It's out a of puzzle. It. Yeah. Uh, an okay puzzle. Some of the environmental puzzles in Remake are a little like, okay, why is this here? It's a lot of stuff they did in Remake is like they added this to some of the environmental stuff they added just to like make more time, I guess, because it's not really great gameplay. It's just like this is a game, not a movie. So you got to do game stuff from time to time. The two things I take issue with that I've heard is Jesse has a backstory, even though in the original she has literally five lines. And yeah, then I, I like it, though. And Sephiroth nice. shows up. Yeah, he's not supposed to show up until the showdown in the Midgard Tower. That's, I mean, that's the yeah, whole thing, but right? No, no, because part, part of your issue with the original Final Fantasy is it doesn't really do a great job foreshadowing anything in the in the first act eh. or much at all, really. Um, and they have really kind of fixed that and smoothed it out, which I think is appreciated. Yeah. Have you been watching any animus? Have I? No, I have been watching what we do in the shadows, though. Oh, we're about to start watching that. Have you seen the movie yet? That's the part we're going to start watching. We're going to okay, watch that yeah. first. Do watch that first. Uh, it doesn't you don't need it to watch the TV show, but I mean, it's a really good movie. So that is what I've heard. Many laughs, much yeah. jokes. Yep. So I've been watching way too much anime. So I have finished one, two, three, four, five new shows. Oh, Since golly. Last spoke. <laughs> when you say finished, do you mean like watch beginning to end or uh, some of them? I had watched like one or two episodes before. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, what else am I going to do? Go outside, go see people. No, I mean, I could be doing that, but I'm playing Final Fantasy seven and vampires what instead. No, no, no. Vampires. No, no, no. I'm doing that. And uh, Animal Crossing. Oh, yeah. Well, 
where I was watching. My wife is doing the Animal Crossing. I am not. Oh, ooh, I need I need her information then. Well, message her. She'll give it to you. And then you can go okay, visit each other's good. islands or something. Good. It's important. More bell mark, more turnip markets. She's all about the turnips. Anyway, so gotta, gotta do the turnips. Let me run down my shows real quick. One was sure. How clumsy you are, Miss Uno. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that one. It's supposed to be pretty cute. It's silly. It's funny. There's a show. It's either airing now or aired last season about two scientists that like like each other but are trying to prove it sure i felt like oh the premise, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah the premise for that yeah. was like too heavy-handed for me and it just reminded me of this show i'm like i'd rather just watch this show because it's sillier fair enough it's a bit etchy but you know what are you gonna do i mean that's sort of what you get these and days. they're uh 12 minute episodes so it's oh, a quick that's watch good. that's one uh the next one i watched was hoseki no kuni or land of the lustrous this one has gym people. They are people who are gyms. Yeah, I watched this show. You did watch it? Yeah, of course I did. It's got this little boy with a, a star on his T-shirt, right? That's a different gym show. You sure? I'm pretty sure. I will say I that say so. we have ragged, and rightfully so, I think, on CG animation and anime forever. Uh, it's usually just bad. It can be good, but usually it's bad. And this is the first show that's been completely CG animated that I enjoyed. And I thought the animation style fit the medium. So it was uh, it was enjoyable. It's unfinished. There's more to it. This is going off a manga that's been long running, but it's it's worth a watch. I enjoyed it. Let me watch this PV real fast and take a look at this. Ursula K. Le Guin wrote a book about a planet where nobody has any gender. Oh, sure. Which I forget the name of. This show, none of them have any gender. Well, I don't know, fair enough. It's an interesting concept. Oh, yeah, this isn't bad. This is way better than many of these. That's, that was the surprising thing to me. Is It wasn't just it was there and it wasn't insulting to me. It was it actually fit. Well, and they're moving fairly well, too. They are. It works. Usually they don't move super great. That was very surprising and I recommend it. Uh, next one was Nietzsche Bros. Oh, Nietzsche Bros. Also known as Daily Lives of High School Boys. Yeah, but it's Nietzsche Bros. Come on. It's a special kind of stupid. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's good, but it's stupid. They don't wrestle a deer in that one, though, which means Nietzsche Joe is always going to be the. They don't. It's not quite as absurd as the original Nietzsche Joe. But I do feel like this show actually does capture what goes on inside the minds of high school boys fairly accurately. It does. It's it's pretty real. It's not all sex jokes all the time. There's just grown up five year olds. Yeah, that's it. I also like their portrayal of uh, high school girls. They're not all these princesses running around being Sundere all the time. Yeah. And then I finished Toilet Bound Hanako Kun. Uh, how did that end up? Did it end up being pretty good? Uh, so it also is not finished. Oh, the season's finished, but the show is reasonable. But it was good. It was cute. It was slightly spooksome. And the animation style is all watercolor. And I love it. That's good. It's uh, it's pretty good. I rated it a seven. So ah, reasonable. Not bad. I would watch it. Oh, especially you just like reminded me. Halloween. What? You just reminded me that the next episode of Clone Wars is, is out and I need to watch that. I don't know what climate. toilet ghosts have anything to do with Clone Wars. Well, I was like, I've also seen some things with decent animation, and I was thinking of Clone Wars. Cause Clone Wars. As you do. Clone Wars is super great. So. And then I watched all of Katana Gattari. Yeah, I don't know that one. So it's by the same author that did the entire Monogatari series. Okay. But he wrote a different set of... I don't remember if it was based off actual light novels. I think it was. It's not the same type of thing that Monogatari is. It is a okay. long form narrative where these two people go collect 12 swords in 12 episodes. All the episodes are 45 minutes long. Oh, that's cool. And it is very well done. I gave good. it a nine. Nice. It is quite good. And I highly recommend it. If you've not seen, it. I'm not going to say anything more because anything more would take away from the experience of not knowing anything. Well, that's pretty long, though, if it's 45 minutes an episode. It's only 12 episodes, though. 
But yeah, yeah. But I kind of uh, missed out, though. This aired back in like 2010. They aired it January to December, one episode a month. And in the story, each episode takes place a month apart. So it goes that's through cool. all the that's seasons better. and it's I missed out on having that kind of experience of one episode per month and sort of going through the journey with them. Excellent. Yes. Very good. I have no idea what I'm going to watch now. My want to watch list is running. Thin. I mean, you could take a gamble on something new. Ha ha ha. I did. That's why we're reviewing this show. So you want to want to take the, the gamble and bet your own destruction? Oh, I always want to bet my own destruction. It's the only thing worth betting. Absolutely. If you're not betting your own destruction, then like, what are you even doing with your life? So this week we decided to watch Kakegururi on a complete and utter whim. Yeah, basically. We talked about it once during one of our uh, preview shows. Look, the next one is Yuri's. Can, can we just skip to the psychological mystery drama with Yuri's, please? Yeah. Well, I do like these character designs a lot. They're well animated, Yuri's. I kind of want to watch this show. Oh, no. Have you been converted? Well, I've been converted to this, yeah. Ooh, no, look at all those Yandere designs. eyes. I know. There's so many Yandere eyes. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it knows what I'm after. Thought it sounded a little bit inter- interesting. We were actually reviewing the second season that came out on netflix both of these are available on netflix you can watch them right now are, are, are we specifically doing season two or are we doing season one or are we doing both we're doing both son okay well good i mean it's kind of what happened with uh kind of what happened with what's it you know that show well the skelly tums i don't even remember now the skelly tums show skelly tums show yeah yeah he's a big skelly tom oh, and he's got a Overlord. pyramid yeah yeah that's the one <laughs> Where I accidentally watched all three seasons. Yeah. So in this case, it ended up being good. I was just scrolling through my anime list, trying to find something to watch. Saw this. Remembered we sort of talked about it. I'm like, I'll give it a watch. Within one episode, I messaged my brother here and said, if this isn't your cup of tea, I don't even know who you are. It was my cup of tea. I don't know if I should say it's good. It's highly entertaining and bananas. It is definitely something. You want to give the elevator pitch? I think you could do a better job of it. Oh, good. It's bananas. Uh, what is the elevator pitch? Uh, somebody who's obsessed with gambling on a sexual level <laughs> takes over a school. It's a sports anime that's gambling. <laughs> I pitched it to you as, and apparently this is incorrect, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because uh, they're not Yandere's, okay? You got to have a dairy part for them to be Yandere's. They're just all bananas. If you watched Akagi. Yeah. yeah. And you got... Washizu, whose whole purpose in life is to bet his own destruction and have other people bet their own destruction. If you took him and made them all lesbians, made a bunch of clones, made them all lesbians and put them in a high school. That's the show. This is that show. It is the show. So they don't play Mahjong. Uh, The character designs are very good. The animation's solid. Uh, And it's bananas. The premise is far fetched. Utterly far fetched, but it revels in its absurdity. It is. And that's what something. makes it work. It is something else. I can't I can't say that I've ever watched anything like it. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, who else gambles their own destruction and then has has to go change their pants, basically? Uh, every time. Every time. Every time they bet their own destru- destruction. But the, the short version is there's a girl named Yumiko. And she transfers to this high school. The high school is run on gambling. I guess there are classes. They mention it once or twice. It doesn't matter. It's It's all gambling. It's not important. Afterwards, though, after class and during class and any time they're at school, the kids gamble. And that's how they determine who is the best in the school. Because really, the school is populated by a bunch of rich kids from all powerful families. And I guess the idea here is that Whoever is the best at gambling will be best in their respective high level positions because. No, risks. I think I think the idea is just gambling. <laughs> I'm trying to set up a world here. I don't think there's much of a rhyme or reason to it. Uh, they try to backhoe it in where it's just like, well, if you're lucky, that's part that's part of your skill set. So it's important to foster and, that. But, 
and risk taking in this, but really it's more like gambling was kind of this cool thing kids did. And then the new student council president went bananas and was like all gambling all the time for everything. And you will literally bet your own destruction. And you will bet your own destruction, because if you lose to the student council, they'll plan out your whole life for you. And that whole life is usually pretty sweet, but they're mad about it for some reason. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Look, there's I'm, something to be said about teenager pride. I mean, there is. And there's something to be said about, like, freedom of choice and whatnot. <laughs> but also, like, you chose to gamble. That was your gamble. Yeah, that was your gamble. So, yeah, it's go watch it if you. There's, there's no way we can prepare you for it, so just go watch uh, it. You can't. Yeah, watch the first episode, and if you're like, yes, please, keep it, going. But if you're like, um, what did I just watch? Watch another one, and then you'll either... I will say one thing, though. Then you'll probably just watch all of it. Yeah. Episode one, if if it were a volume knob of crazy, episode one's probably an eight. And then by episode three, it's gone all the way up to 11. I can't tell if it just stays there or if they somehow keeps going up. It has to go up from there because of the eye patch girl episodes. And oh, that's, that's true. Probably peak crazy. Yeah, that was probably peak crazy. What was that? That's, like episode eight or something? Peak bananas. It's a short show, too. It's uh, two seasons of two seasons of 12. Yeah, so 24 episodes total. So. Yeah, go watch it. Anyway, spoiler land. I don't even know how to approach this. Let's talk about all of the kids. Uh, let's talk about. Well, because, well. I guess I guess we should. There's a lot of them because there's in season one, it's the student council that she beats everyone in the student council at gambling. And then season two, they start taking out all the members of the Gami clan. Yeah. Right. All Lots the different Gami. kinds of them. Well, all the, the different Gamis. There's a lot of Gamis. Is it Gami or gonna, Bami? It's well, I think it's yes. Yes. Because, because of how the work. way. Yeah, because of how that sound changes. But yes, bummies and gummies and Let, let's start with our our good girl here, Yumiko. Yumiko and her last name is Jabami. Jabami. She's a bummy, but I think there's some gummies. I don't remember. It's not important. So Yumiko shows up at school. She's a transfer kid. We don't know anything about her backstory. And you never find out anything about her backstory. Except She's she has got a, sister. a sick sister who probably is sick because of gambling. <laughs> That's about all we know. <laughs> of course. <laughs> she got gambled into being sick. You know, it's a lot like being geased into believing you're blind and in a wheelchair. But you got gambled into being blind and in a wheelchair. She's just in bed. She doesn't have her. Sorry, wheelchair. those were spoilers for a really bad TV show. So I apologize if I just spoiled Lelouch of the Rebellion for you. Actually, I'm not, because maybe now you won't watch Lelouch of the Rebellion because it's bad. I was just reading its Wikipedia. Like, it's not, bad. Not four hours ago, because I was looking up uh, Norio Wakamoto roles. Oh, he's very good in that. He's the only redeeming factor. <laughs> he flies at some point. It's very good. <laughs> but um, Lelouch of the Rebellion sucks. Now, Yumiko does not fly. In fact, she doesn't really have any good qualities that make her stand out other than the one thing that's kind of unique so this is basically a sports anime uh-huh right but uh yumiko doesn't really have any special skills her special scare skill is she don't give a f <laughs> that, that's her special skill so you think that given that it's a sports anime it's all about gambling that she's gonna win every single game and what a bore and she does win the first couple because she has an ungodly amount of gaming skills. I don't even know if that's true. Now, intimidation factor. So did you get far enough in Jojo to watch the gambling episode of Jojo? No. OK, well, she she's she is that she is that gambling episode of Jojo. How Jojo gambles is how you make gambles. And that's why she wins. You know, the show does have a very Jojo esque nature to it, doesn't it? It really does. No. So in the Jojo episode, right, he in a Western town or something. Right. And the enemy stand like if you gamble with it, he'll kill you and eat your soul or something, something. I don't know. Sure. Either way, they just they just play like five card poker and all Jojo does. He doesn't even look at his cards and just says all in. Right. <laughs> he just he's just like, I'm 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 going with this. And the other guy is just trying to think of like every different way that he could have 
that he's trying to trick him because he just instantly knows he's going to win. And Jojo's just like, I'm winning. I'm going to win this. I'm going to win this. And the other guys are like, how can he be so confident? Why is he going to win this? And he ends up overthinking himself into a hole where he loses, even though Jojo never saw his hand and didn't have any tricks up his sleeve whatsoever. Yeah, that happens quite a bit. And, and, and that's basically what Yumiko does. However, I mean, she, she she's granted she is blessed with some like really good memory and good perception. Yeah. But, you know, no more than any other character in the show, really. It's just that she's willing to go further than anyone else. Yeah. If you don't have any gambling at all, she's just a bubbly, cheer, cheerful little girl who yeah. runs around and is happy all the time. She would be the side character in any other anime to be the bubbly yeah. one. But someone mentions a game and doesn't matter what the game is. She'd be like, uh, I bet my life on it. Yeah, literally <laughs> my entire life. It's not it's not that she wins through bluffing. That's not right. That would imply like she's tricking people when really she's winning just by her sheer willingness to go farther than the other person to risk more than anyone else around her. Because she gets off literally on yeah. she she lives in that zone of I have bet everything and I could lose it all based on sheer dumb luck. Yep. And for some reason that that little interval of time, like that's what she lives for. Yep. Somebody's going to catch up to her, I'm sure. Uh, probably not. If it was an episode of Kaiji, it would. In, in an episode of Kaiji, it catches up to him in episode one. They, come to think of it, this is just Kaiji the musical. High school musical with Kaiji. Uh, kind of. Why do you say this is a musical, though? Because we have whole episodes dedicated to musical contests. What are you talking about? I mean, just a couple. It's like three. Anyway, the one thing that Yumiko does not like, like she she's fine with cheating, even if you cheat against her. She feels like uh, I got duped. That's on me. Good on you for uh, exploiting my weaknesses. But what she doesn't like is just pure self-destruction. Oh, yeah, yeah. That makes her very angry. Very angry. And I think that's like the only time we see her genuinely angry throughout the show is when she has that. Or when people ruin the gamble. That too. Or choose choose not to gamble. Because what she doesn't like, she doesn't like it when people rig it so they can't lose. And the only reason she doesn't like that isn't because it's cheating or anything. It's because you've taken away the essence of the gamble. Mm -hmm. A gamble is no fun if you know you are going to win. You have to be able to have that feeling of I could lose at any moment. Yeah, that's all she cares about. But I think that the only person who really does that to her is Madari, the gun chick. And she does it twice. Yeah. Yep. She hates her guts. Well, she also has that disagreement with Mary. Like she doesn't like Mary much because Mary only wants to take sure, sure bets. That's the difference between the two. Well, at least at the start of the show, she gets into it. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit more. But for the most part, she only likes sure things. Now, would you put Yumiko on your list of waifus going forward? Hmm. No, she's too dangerous. <laughs> she's too dangerous. She's too dangerous. By the way, I do like all of her reaction pictures. Oh, there are so many good ones. Some of them are just absolutely grotesque. But yeah. Some of them are just amazing like the one where she looks like mob yeah like just there's a lot of good instant classics she does have a hime cut yeah she does yeah i, I would say she's got a hime cut not a yandere charm though. no no she's emphatically not a yandere let's see who else should we talk about how about uh, probably mary and the principal they're, they're the other two like uh, very important characters Mary's the one that actually has a real character arc Oh, well, we should probably talk about the boy, too, at some point. Yeah, he's actually well, kind of important. We'll get to him. <laughs> he's, he's the boring one. Let's talk about Mary first. So we got he's the straight man in more ways than one. Ugh. So we got yeah, Mary, yeah, who at the yeah. very start, like, we're, we're introduced to Ryota, and we'll talk about him in a minute. He's a sad sack. But Mary has control uh, of him. He's not a sad sack. He's, he's, a, he's, a Debbie, he's a party pooper is what he is. So she won a game against him at some point. And because of the new student council rules, because he lost and he lost everything, he's now indebted to the student council. Literally, he is called a house pet. He owes them his life in a very real and literal sense. Yes. And he is worse than garbage and he is treated like worse than garbage. And he's basically owned 
by Mary, at least while at school. I don't know if it applies to outside school. Doesn't matter. Oh, I hope so. Yumiko waltzes in. Mary is super sadistic and really getting off on the fact that she has power over all these people. At least in her class, she's the most skilled gambler. And she's very comfortable where she is. She's gotten there by cheating and making sure that she cannot lose. Yumiko waltzes in and beats her at her own game. Like instantly. It's very well done. So she has a personality break. Eventually comes around and joins Yumiko and crew as one of her uh, banditos. And you would think that they set her up as like being the like villain of the show. But no, not at all. She's more like Speedwagon. Starts out as an yeah, enemy yeah, and yeah. then becomes like best pal. Yeah. Yep. But she, she doesn't have a hat, so not as good as Speedwagon. Uh, what more can we say about Mary? She's cool. She's the blonde. She is the blonde. I mean, she's the one that doesn't. She's the one that loves sure bets. She only does things if she knows she can't lose. She does have the best way of saying baka. She's a she is a strategy gambler where she runs all of the odds and makes sure they're in her favor before she does anything, as opposed to Yumeko, who's the, you know, literally a compulsive gambler. Mm -hmm. She does it for the thrill of not knowing if she will win or lose everything. Yeah, Mary's more of I like to best people and she gets off on that. There's a lot of getting off in this show. Uh, Yes. When we first meet Mary, like she is sadistic and she does get better. At least she's not sadistic towards her. I guess they're her friends. Are there any friends in the school? It's hard to say. No, no. But she still keeps her sadistic streak when she's up against people that are overly confident. She doesn't like that. Yeah. So. And then she gets uh, to become an integral part of the whole plot to take over the student council presidency, which slash the bombing clan slash the world, I guess. I don't all know. of Japan. You don't know oh, because you're gambling at this one high school. <laughs> uh, don't worry about it. Listen, it makes sense. Uh, it doesn't, though, but it's over the top enough that you buy into it. OK, what about Kiari? She is the student council president. Oh, she's also bananas, but in a much more calm bananas. She is Yumiko's, I mean, obviously arch rival because they declared slash, themselves to be such. Yeah. Slash love interest? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. Uh, slash kindred spirit. At least that. She's the one that uh, waltzed into the school at some point. And it's never really spelled out how she did it or why she did it. But she waltzed in, bet the previous student council president for that position. Yeah. One. And then turn the entire school into a gulag if you lost. Yeah. That, that's it. And she doesn't view people as human beings. I don't even think she views herself as human being. That's probably true. She thinks all humans are trash. Uh, is she wrong, though? Mm, it's hard to say these days. I don't know. She's a little enigmatic because we don't quite learn her full, her full plan. She eventually uh, decides to gamble away her position as head of the Bami clans the unified bombing clans to a whole bunch of the other like smaller families in the clan. Mm -hmm. Uh, But we don't quite know why or what she's playing at yet. I feel like she probably isn't. I think personally speaking, she saw Yumiko found a kindred spirit and that probably sparked something in her that was like, well, what's the most I could lose? And it's not just the presidency. I mean, you're probably right. It's being the head of the whole family, right? So what if I I bet all of that? It's pre- it, again, it's going to be like that Jojo thing where she's going to end up sort of like winning only because she's the only one willing to to bet everything on this. And unfortunately, the manga this is based on has not gotten to the end of the presidency gamble vote thing. Oh, come on. Yeah. Can we can we please discuss how they vote for student council? Because it's the dumbest. Sure. Let's talk about how they vote for student council president at this. So high this, school. this is the season two. This is the season two plot, right? It's, it's not the not just the bombing clan being head of the bombing clan is being head of the student council at this one prestigious gamble school yep. because reasons. And the way they're going to do the voting is every person gets one vote. But that vote is actually a poker chip and you win votes by taking other people's poker chips. It's very silly. I kind of like it, actually. I mean, I I like it, but it's also just so bananas. I think it would be interesting. 
just so bananas. Maybe we could decide elections like that. It makes more yeah. sense. And everybody's in it, right? Because you just have to acquire the most votes. You, everybody is everybody is running the election because, like, if you can just acquire enough votes, you'll just win. Because you vote for yourself. Let's talk about Ryota. He's the he is the every man that's inserted into the crazy. He's a normal dude. He's a sad sack. But he gets a little bit better. He starts to get into it a little bit. He spends the entire first season just being overwhelmed. Like he's caught up in the wake of Yumiko because she yeah. saves him from Mary. And is very much just like, why? What? Don't do the dumb thing. Yumiko, please don't do the dumb thing. It's a lot of whining. I can't believe they are doing this. How could this be? Why would please. they do these things? There's no why way they, they could why? possibly win. Oh, wow. They why won. Are they, why are they? Why are they? <laughs> just that. Trying to convince everyone. At the end of the first season, when uh, Yumiko and Kiari are finally having their showdown, he's the pivotal player in that game. And he learns how to how to gamble. He finally gets into it. That's, that was a good game. I like that. It was very simple. Yeah. And the best part was is he tried to outsmart Kirari, which is a bad idea. Don't do that. Tried to outsmart her by like, oh, I think this card here, the winning card, I think that's that's it because she probably marked it so she could find it and he almost picks it and then he's like wait no i'm gonna let the hand of fate guide me yep of course the hand of fate picks the one that's convenient to the plot but that's not important the important thing is ryota learn to risk it all exactly and that's the important lesson from this show is you have to bet your life you have to bet your own destruction. If you're not betting your own destruction, are you even gambling at all? The answer is no, you're not. And you need to the get into it. Is no. You must bet your own destruction on something utterly meaningless. Yes. Otherwise, it has no meaning. <laughs> Obviously. Obviously. Have we solved nihilism? Is this how this goes? I mean, it is for this this one pretend show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how about Itsuki? She's Itsuki. the heiress to a gaming company, which is definitely not Nintendo. Oh, I, I kind of like Itsuki. Like, she seems sort of normal, at least in the school. For the school, she seems normal, but she has a problem. See, she has this... But she fixes her problem. She gets over it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me break down what you just said. Her original problem was she carries around a small briefcase full of fingernails that she has pulled off of... Her victims that she has uh, won from. You know, she, yeah, that was the original problem. Fair she, square, she beats that by pulling out all of her own fingernails and betting her own destruction. Uh, I mean, yes. How else would one fix a problem other than betting their own destruction? And by that, she is redeemed somehow. Yes, but then she redeems somebody else by being good. Which which person? She redeems uh, guy the, the guy, the guy who loses all of his hair. He doesn't lose his hair. He loses all the color in his hair. Yeah, because he bet his own destruction and then he lost. But but she she learned a valuable lesson because she bet her own destruction, which was exactly you want to talk about what she bet. She bet her life plan. Yeah. And her life plan was, OK, you're going to graduate high school here. <laughs> and you're going to have a really good life. You're going to get married to an ambassador or something, some middle political guy. Yeah. You're going to have two or three kids. You're going to live on several million dollars a year. And that's it. Yeah. And she takes great umbrage to this. Well, plan. it's because it takes away free will. There's no free will in this show. Yeah, well, there's only gambling. There's only gambling and you are not free to refuse to gamble. So that's true. She would she would rather bet her own destruction than get married to. Some guy who's successful and basically live a life of luxury. She wants to make it on her own. Well, because it was planned for her, and that's that's no good. That is no good. Uh, I do love the game that she plays for her her love interest. What's his what's his face? The super boring one. Kaede. Sure, if that's his name. I think that's his name. Which game is this? Because she played a couple. That's the that's the greater good game. Ah, yes. And that's a good game. That is a good game. I would like to play a game like that, I think. Yeah, it's very interesting. The thing is, is most of these games are highly reliant on betting real things or they don't work. 
because you actually have to bet something of worth or people won't behave correctly. Most games are like that. That's why I could never play poker with like Uncle Stan. Like, let's play poker with these chips. Well, these chips don't mean anything. So what's the point? Yeah, I don't feel like I'm winning. I just now have more chips. How about we can't not talk about Midari, the gun girl. Look, see, she's the closest to a Yandere in this. Is she a Yandere? No, I would say no, but I'm just saying she's the closest. She's a Yandere to herself. Uh, yeah, to death. She's a Yandere to death. She really, really gets off on self, literal self-destruction. Like, she's not in yeah. it for the thrill of the possibility of self-destruction. She no. just wants to be destroyed. But not by her own hand for some reason. Yeah, uh, she wants to be killed by a hot chick. Because she'll get off on it, I guess. Big into, like, Russian roulette. Like, a little too much. I mean, any amount of yeah. Russian roulette is too much. But in this yeah. case, she goes into a bathroom, plays it, plays herself... It's it's a weird show. Come on. Yeah, it's a very weird show. Good show. Madari is the only person that Yumiko despises. Like, does not even. Yep. (laughs) Give her the time of day. Dude, doesn't even accept her existence. I know the whole last arc with her being there is very good. Like she takes it to the point where during the, the the auction, the vote auction, even though it's within her best interest, Yumiko's best interest, to listen to what Madari is saying. <laughs> she, <laughs> she refuses to listen and, or acknowledge anything that she says because she's like, she doesn't exist. So I'm going to take everything she says, and that is discounted from my calculation of the game. Or even just like, who are you talking to, Ryota? I know of no one. Why are you talking to that wall? <laughs> All because she tried to cheat at the finger cutting game. Yeah, well, no, she didn't try to cheat at all. That's the problem. It wasn't even the cheating is that she took away the risk by knowing the outcome. She wanted to cut her fingers off. Yeah, so she cut both both ropes holding a guillotine blade instead of just one, because cutting the one is like the purest moment of am I going to lose something on on a on a gamble? But cutting both takes away the gamble. Uh huh. And that draws Yumiko's fire. Yeah. She does wear an eye patch, uh, and that's because at one point Kiari is like, hey, I will get rid of your debt or answer a question or one of the two if you gouge out your own eye. And without question, no, 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 no. if, no, if you no, give no. me your it's, eye. Nope. It's she wants to see what's behind an eye. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, she wants to see what's behind someone's eye. The implication was she wanted to take her eyeball out. So yeah. without hesitation, Matari pulls out a pen and stabs her own eye out. Yep. Which actually makes Kiari a little annoyed because she's like, well, I wanted to see the back of the eye and now you've destroyed it. So and she's like, I can do the other one. I've got one more. It's like, it's fine. Just go away. Yeah, no, it's now boring. That does get her a spot on the student council, though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then we have to talk about best girl. Uh, which one's best girl? It's uh, Kiari's sister. I mean, I, is she best girl? You say so. As far as like waifu material? Yes. Cool. What? All right. You don't sure. like Didika? Yeah. She wears a mask. She's fine. Yeah, she wears a mask. She's adorable. Uh, she follows Mary around, but she's not a, yeah, a right. yandere. She doesn't bet her own destruction, so. Oh, she's boring. So why does she get to be student council vice president then? Well, because she's what's her name? Sister. That's the only reason. And there's some there, there's something shady here. I think she was the former student council. I don't know. And they're twins. There's something going on there. That they'll explore at some point. But well, she really wants to be Mary's friend. Mary doesn't want friends, especially not her, because she doesn't Mary's trust anybody that friends. would play a betting game with a mask on. However, I will point out that uh, Didika was ahead of her time because now she is social distancing and keeping a mask on. Ah, uh, that's true. So you she was she was playing the long game. She's doing it before it was cool. All right. So that's basically all the characters that matter. Uh, I mean, I guess there's a there's a bunch of characters. I mean, Batsugami, uh, Batsubami, you should pro- we, should, we could talk about, but sort of the climax of the show. So that, that would be a little lame to do. Um, that's a big spoiler, too. But she's cool. What was your favorite game? What was my favorite? Game? Oh, definitely the. Uh, Definitely the greater good game. It's the most interesting from a from a game standpoint. It's the most interesting. Many of the games in the show aren't particularly 
like interesting games in and of their own. The gamble is interesting, but the game is not. Um, and I care about these sorts of games from a game perspective. But the, the greater good game is the most interesting because it's kind of like a interesting social deception style game. You want to explain it to the folks? Um, it's also it's also a very good game for showing sort of the tragedy of the commons. Uh, so in this game, basically, you want to be the first one to like 40 coins or something. Uh, you have five. And then on your turn, you secretly add those five coins either to taxes or to yourself. You can either bank them or pay them to taxes in any combination. So you can do three to taxes and two to yourself. And what then happens is the taxes are all collected, doubled and then handed out evenly to everybody. Uh, whereas the personal stash you keep for yourself, and it's not revealed till the end of the game who has the most money and whoever has the most money wins, mm -hmm. essentially. But if you fail to make a certain amount of money, uh, you super lose. Oh, and you can vote some. You can vote somebody off. How many times so do they think that do that? Is it they only voted one person off? When I watched it, I understood the game as every round they would vote somebody off. But then no, 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 they don't it, have to. Or was it just they had the choice? If three people decide, they can vote someone off. Ah, OK. That makes more sense. Then. So if you can find out who is who is betraying. You can you can lose. It, it was the uh, only game that had a multitude of people. And the whole point of the game was to outsmart everyone else. It was kind of like a better version of Survivor. Yeah, no, because again, it's a very, very interesting uh, social game because the correct way to play is everybody pay their taxes. But if you do that, nobody's actually going to come out ahead. Maybe you should make a real game out of it. Well, I mean, it pretty much already is. The only problem is, again, the game only works if there's something real on the line. Otherwise, people don't behave correctly. A lot of the games were either pure skill, like the memoriza memorization games, or pure random, like Life of or Death. I did like the Nim Type Zero. Oh, that's a very interesting game, too. That one, that one's another one that's the most game-like. Yeah, so it's a game where everybody, there are four different types of cards. There's a zero, one, two, or three. And you go around the table. Yes. You, you play a number, and then the next person plays a number. And then those two added together equals something. So if it's two and then three, that's five. And the idea is you have to play, keep playing until you reach nine. And the next person to play a card that sums over nine loses. Yeah. And you continue playing this until nobody can can win or no one else can lose. And you've played a certain number of rounds. Yeah. I thought that was an interesting game, especially since they were playing it in pairs. Yes, uh, that's a that's another very interesting game that would easily translate that one. You could do without anything on the line and it would work. Uh, you could just do a you could just do it for points mm -hmm. uh, like a standard board game. Uh, the problem with greater good is you actually have to have something on the you, you can't just do it for points or people will screw it up. Kind of like poker. Poker's OK without something on the line, but you really have to have something tangible or the behaviors off where type zero would work fine. Yeah. Uh, another good game is the one from, I think it's the climax of season one. Climax of season one was the tarot card one. No, no, I guess it's the one before that. it's the one where you the choice um, poker. No, no choice poker is bad. Really? No, oh, no, no. I mean, it's an interesting game, but it's, I mean, they, they tell you why it's, it's a, a breakable game. Ah. One with the other idol, with the actress, uh, the card game ah. where you all say what you're playing. Oh, yeah. The one where you say, I'm putting this number into this pile. And the whole yeah. idea is the pile needs to reach like, I think it's 63, 63 yeah, it points can't go over 63. Yeah. And then once someone says, I don't want to play another card, you bet if it's above or below 63. And that's a good game. I think there's several real life games that are basically that mechanic, but it's good. Now, the worst game. Absolutely has to be Tower of Doors. Yeah, it's a little weird. Not only does the game itself not make a whole lot of sense and the premise behind why Yumiko wins not make a whole lot of sense, but the yeah. fact that the Tower of Doors exists does not make a lot of sense. Yeah, it's very silly. I mean, I understand why Yumiko loves it is because somebody made this whole convoluted tower just to gamble in it. That's very dumb and it makes me horny. And you're like, yeah, OK, well, the thing <laughs> that's, is, that's with you can character. only gamble in it once. Like yeah, once you know, know the, this, trick. the trick, like it's useless. So somebody, probably Kiari, built this tower, which must have cost tens of millions of dollars at least. Yeah. Put a giant 
air mattress covered in flowers outside. Only one. Only one quadrant. One just in one. case. Just in case. Just in case somebody bet jumping from the tower and if they would have to pick the right door to jump out of to not die. It's like wh- the pr- none of this makes sense. Yeah. The whole thing. I, I didn't like it. I was it's hoping for silly. a better a better climax to that arc. Uh, yeah, better showdown between those two characters. Yeah, it was more. I'm going to go down this ladder. Look, I outsmarted you because I didn't show didn't show what Yumiko was up to. Lol. OK, move on to something that matters. Yeah. See, so, you know, I did. I forgot that that other goal existed until we were talking about it just now. Oh, the not vice president, but the secretary. Yeah, the other lesbian. I mean, they're all lesbians. Not Ryota. He's not a lesbian. Uh, isn't he just a male lesbian? I think the only problem is the, the show s- stops because it ran out of material. And the manga is where the show stops. Like, well, it's not exactly. There's a couple of chapters afterwards, but it's essentially still ongoing. And there's not enough material to do another season yet and probably won't be for uh, at least a year. Yeah, that's butts. But there is a prequel spinoff. That oh. has probably enough material to to do Mary's story from before Yumiko shows up. Oh, I would I would I would do that. I don't know if there's any plans to do that, but it exists. Uh, there's one called Twin. That, that's one of the mangas. And then there's a whole the mangas. There's a whole spinoff about Midari for some reason. I don't know why that exists. Midari. Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's those two. And then there's a, a parody one, too. There's a parody manga series. Is it uh, it's a four high coma. school AU? I don't think it's an AU. I think it's just a silly version of. Sorry, I misspoke. A much simpler, silly version of the actual show. Yeah, OK. Yeah, I'd read that because I like these characters because they're all massively over the top. Also, there's a live action version of this show. It couldn't possibly be good. I don't know why we do live actions to begin with of anime, because the animation medium is built for this kind of high drama over the top stakes kind of nonsense. So I don't know how they can replicate that kind of insanity in live action. Live action is too sterile for this show. How bananas this is. Yeah. Unless Kagi has a live action and you can do that because that's that's not. That's a lot more technical. This is so bananas unless they got a holly a bollywood director to do it in which case you would end up with something like this the most dramatic scene ever shot i mean yeah i mean then you could (laughs) yeah yeah i mean this is fair this would belong in this show i love bollywood it's not this is a very good shot i love it it doesn't stop good it shouldn't oh i forgot about this other one the best character introduction ever I could see uh, Yumiko walking in with that kind of nonsense. Ooh, yeah, I could. I will link these in the show description. They are delightful. I mean, as you should. They're very good. <laughs> They're very important. So that that's Kakegururi. Yeah, uh, that's about all we can say about it. Other than if you're into something that's just so bananas, you have to see it to believe it. This is that show. But in a good way. Like, this is fun. This is followable. This isn't like... Um, what with the guy? He's got a hole in his chest. Not Kaiji. Guy with a hole in his chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You watched it. You couldn't get past the first episode because you're a weenie. Kaiba. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I've i seen Kaiba. Maybe I'll finish Kaiba by next time. That's a lie. I'm not sure. going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But speaking of, what are we going to watch for next time? Oh, golly, I have no idea. By the way, if you do like Kakaguri, I highly suggest finding and watching Kaiji or Akagi. Or both. All right, so next time we will watch High Score Girl. Tiger King. We're not going to watch Tiger King because that's awful, okay. full of awful people. Instead, we're going to watch High Score Girl, which is on Netflix. So you can go watch it right now. Unless you don't have a Netflix subscription, in which case, why do you listen to podcasts if you're that backward? All right, see you later. All right, bye forever. Bye.